Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. So today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create the equivalent of a Java hash map, or you know, other object-oriented languages have their take on a map where you can store values based on a key. In ABAP, we can do the same thing using a hashed internal table, or an internal table with a key and a value field. And sometimes that just gets a little bit messy. It's not that intuitive right off the rip, especially if you're used to other object-oriented languages, because most other object-oriented languages do have some notion of uh, a hash map, a linked hash map, that kind of thing. So I'm, you know, more of a Java developer before I started doing OpOp. So that's where I get most of my knowledge from as far as programming. I always asked is, you know, does OpOp have this? Java had this. What's the equivalent? So if we look at the documentation for you know hash map in Java, this is from the Oracle Java 8 um, Java doc, we can see that the um, actual object has you know familiar methods to us Java developers, but we'll get into that shortly. So like clear, contains key, contains value, get object based on a key is empty, put object, you know, given a key and value remove, size, by all those different methods. So thankfully with the advent of object-oriented ABOP, we're able to do something similar in ABOP. So we'll do, we'll go to transaction SE24, and I've already created this class for you guys just to avoid this video being 50,000 minutes long. Um, we'll do a Z class hash map, and we'll go ahead and just display this class. I've just done a few of the methods that are going to be the most useful if you're familiar with you know, Java or ABAP. Uh, I haven't given any description here. I really should go back and do that, but truth be told, I, I implemented all this in the source code based editor here. I just wrote it out. I didn't use the actual class builder. As far as using class builder, we'll get into that in another video. But um, this is a global class with methods clear, contains key, contains value, get keys, get which gets an object based on its key is empty lets us know if the hash map or the map itself is empty remove an object based on key um, the size of the actual map object and then put which is put a value based on key again we can look at our parameters in here in the you know graphical class builder like I said I use source code based class builder so we're uh, we're not gonna have all the descriptions and things like that that you ordinarily would have so Let's take a look at this. I want to go over it just really quickly, guys. What we're essentially doing is we're creating a type. It's public data. It's a type, and it's uh, basically a table, a string type. Ah, uh, what am I trying to say? So we're going to make an internal table that has two fields, key type string and value type string. So this isn't a generic class. We could we could say type object here and you know rewrite this a little bit so that we could actually retrieve objects based on string key values or objects based on object key values however we wanted to do it this one just simply deals with strings uh, if you take a look at this code you should be able to modify that you know if you want to do object values as opposed to just string values but this is what I've got so far so then we have uh, data tab str which is just going to be a, a table of this type an internal table uh, tab strings I don't even know if I use that <laughs> yeah, so get keys is where we're going to use that. I think. Yeah, no, maybe not. <laughs> I didn't even use this, guys. Should have looked at that before I started this video. Apologies there. So get keys. Returning value keys like taps. Well, I guess I did. Okay, yeah, so we did use that there. Um, just wanted to make sure before I confuse the hell out of you guys. So here's our method definitions. Clear, contains key, contains value, get keys, get, is empty, remove, size, and put. So we can go through, I'll just scroll through this so you guys can see it if you want to implement it in your own system. Clear just refreshes our tab string, which is our internal table. Um, contains key is just going to return this contains value 
uh, type abap bool, either uh, abap true or abap false. We're going to read the table with the key, and if we have a you know a match, we're going to say yes, it does contain that key. Contains value. Same thing, but we're going to read it with the value, and check our return code. And if it's zero, we're going to say contains is abop true. Method get to create some data. Read some data from our table using the key. Um, if we don't have any data, we're just going to clear value here. The value is our return value there, guys. Type string. Get keys. We're going to create field symbols of type ty tab string. We're going to assign string entry and we're going to append that key to keys, which is our return value, like tab strings. It is empty. We're going to describe the table lines and if it's you know, less than one, it's empty. So we'll return empty. Otherwise, it defaults to abop true. Put is going to work essentially like it does in Java, where if you put something at a key where the key already exists, it's just going to overwrite the existing key. So we're going to get our key and value from our import parameters, and we're going to delete the internal table line where the key is equal to key, and then insert it. So essentially overwriting it. Our remove method here is simply going to remove that entry from the internal table given a key as an importing parameter. And then our size is going to describe the actual internal table tab string and return that. So this at face value isn't that complex, but it does solve a problem that, that us folks that come from other programming languages tend to have is we really like this, this map structure. We like this data, you know, actual structure, but there's nothing in ABOP that's really straightforward. We'd have to create a hash table and just do all kind of a weird and wacky stuff in order to get it to look similar. So I've created a report just called it Z hash map. We're going to create um, a reference to our Z class hash map, create object map. We're going to call it map. And then we see here we can actually call methods on map. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Let's go ahead and just activate this really quick. And then we'll do map. And then I should be able to see my methods here. I don't know why I'm not seeing that. Did I not activate this? Should have activated Z class hash map. Type ref to Z class hash map. And then we'll say put. I still don't know why I'm not getting the help there. I'm looking for that, you know, control space help. So I'll just say one. Go ahead and check it. No syntax errors. Activate it. So it looks like everything's okay there. So now I'll just say data uh, return value type string. And then I'll say return value equals map get one. And then I'll just say write. So this is just going to put key1's value as a in our map object. It's going to create a variable ret value. It's going to get the value at key1. And it's going to put it in return value. And then we're just going to write return value. So let's check it, activate it, and we'll go ahead and run this. And we'll see return value is a. So that works just like the hash map does in Java. Like I said, C Sharp's got a, I don't think they call it hash map in C Sharp. I could be wrong. It's been so long since I've done C Sharp. Uh, but other object oriented languages definitely have this map structure. Python has dictionaries, it's what they call it. Um, so it's something that an object oriented programming is very, very useful because you can say, you know, I want to map this to this. And <laughs> honestly, on almost every single Java program I've ever written, I've used a hash map. So you're probably going to want something similar in ABOP. This is the way to do it, you know, using ABOP objects. 
and making things a lot more simple than creating internal tables and reading certain indexes and doing this, that, and the other. So that's the source code there, guys. We'll scroll through that one more time. You can pause, copy this down um, if you find this useful. I personally, since I'm just so used to the concept of hash maps in Java, I, I love this code and uh, I'm definitely going to make use of this in some reports. So we could go in here, you know, after that we could say map. I still don't know why when I do control enter it's not giving me that, that help there. It should. Let's go back. I don't want to look at source code base anymore. I'm just going to pull this over to this screen here. Look at my methods. So we could call any of these here. I could say uh, map clear and then say let's see map dot size. What did I make it return? Parameters size returning an integer. So data we'll just call it map size type i. And let's say map size equals map size. And then we can come in here and say right map size equals. And then do map underscore size. Check it. Oh, where'd I mess up here? Ah, I forgot a greater than sign for calling the method. We'll activate it now. Go ahead and run it and we can see after we call our clear method our map size is zero so you know I've got uh, not in this particular system but I do have a for each of these methods I like to write unit tests I usually try and do it this way local definitions implementations and then local test classes and that makes it so that I can come here and I can say you know run unit test and it'll tell me if every method is behaving the way that I expect it to be behaving. So that's another good thing if you're writing something you're going to be using throughout different reports. Go ahead and write some unit tests. It's a little painstaking at first, but you know once you have those unit tests, you're able to see, you know, if I make a change to this class, does it affect, you know, the output that I expect? And so that's really useful so you don't screw up a whole bunch of programs with just one small change. Maybe I want to change a parameter here or the name of a method and do some other little internal stuff, but that's basically essentially everything, guys, for this uh, this sort of hash map type class for ABOP. Again, we're just using built-in ABOP data structure, so internal tables, and you know our different read table statements, and actually inserting, and this kind of like SQL type behavior for internal tables, and converting it into a syntax that object-oriented programmers are going to be way more familiar with, and I feel it also improves drastically the readability of the code. It makes much more sense to say get and put right here and clear than it does to say read table index such and such, delete table where key equals key, that kind of thing. So if you found this useful, please leave me a like, give me a subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.